C Sharp is a great programming language to learn. And even if you've never programmed at all before, this is the place to start. I'm Hugh, and this is the first lesson in a C Sharp programming course on Windows for complete beginners. The first thing you need to do is download a free copy of Visual Studio. That provides all the programming tools you need. When you install it, be sure to select the options to install the .NET development tools for C Sharp. If you need any more help installing Visual Studio, I have a short video all about that. The link is down below. Once Visual Studio is installed, you are ready to write your first C Sharp program. So I start Visual Studio from the start menu. And once that's loaded, I have to start a new project. So that's file, new project. And you'll see that there's a whole mass of different project types here, depending on what you've got installed. The project I want is for C Sharp, so I can select that here. And the platform I want is for Windows, so I can select that here. Now in this series, I'm only going to be using two project types. One will be a Windows Forms project, and that's when I want to do visual design with windows and buttons and so on. And the other is a console project, and that's when I want to run the program from the system prompt. So let me show you how to do that now. I've got console up here. Oh, incidentally, if you want to narrow down the choices, you can also select console from this. So here you can see that I've narrowed the choices now down to just two. So I've got C Sharp, Windows, Console, and I've either got the choice Console App or Console App.NET Framework. Either would do. However, this first choice Console App is the newer project type. It uses all the latest code and tools called .NET Core, uh, which were developed for cross-platform development so that programs can be created for Linux and Mac OS, as well as for Windows, whereas the second one, ConsoleApp.NET Framework, that is the older version, which could only be run on Windows. Doesn't really matter for our purposes, but I'll select the newer version, Console App, and click Next. Now I can give it a name. I just call it My Project by entering in the project name field. Location, well, you could browse if you wanted to browse to a specific location. Uh, you might want to create a subdirectory on disk to store all your uh, test projects. I leave it as it is and I'm ready to go. Click next and create. And after a few seconds, up should pop my project. And you can see that it's listed in the Solution Explorer window over here. This is where your projects will be listed in any code files they contain will also be shown. Now it's automatically written this file called program.cs and it's written this ready to run piece of code into it that just displays hello world. Here console is the name of a class. I'll explain classes later on. For now all that you need to know is that the console class gives us access to a function or method called writeLine. WriteLine is a ready-to-use code routine that writes out a string. Here, a single line of text. In C Sharp, a string is a piece of text between double quotes like this string, hello world. So here we have a complete line of C Sharp code. The C Sharp language has its own special syntax, its grammar, that we have to use when writing code. The syntax here is first the class name, console, which gives access to the right line function or method. Then a dot, then the name of the function, right line, then a pair of parentheses. They show that right line is a function and a semicolon to mark the end of this complete statement. Since the right line function expects to write a string, I have to put that string, that's this text between double quotes, inside the parentheses. That causes the string to be passed to the function so that the function can write or display the text on screen. The names of things in C-sharp must be in the correct case, and that's something you have to watch out for too. So console must have a capital C. If I put a lowercase c instead of an uppercase c, then Visual Studio shows me this red squiggly line, which is an error marker. Hover your mouse over the error marker, and it will give you an error message. The name console does not exist in the current context. That's because it doesn't like this lowercase c, put the capital C back, and we're back in action. Now let's actually write some code. So 
Visual Studio automatically generated this, I want to write my own code, select all that's there by pressing Control A and backspace to delete it. Now, let me write some actual code. And if you're following along with Visual Studio loaded, try this out yourself. String, uh, space, then first name. Here, string is a data type. Remember, string is a piece of text. And first name, that's the name of a variable. So a variable is just a label to which values can be assigned. And I can refer to the label in my program when I want to get at a piece of data. So again, we've seen console before, console dot write line. Now you see as I'm writing that Visual Studio is making these suggestions. Uh, this is its IntelliSense system and it tries to analyze what I'm writing and save me time by suggesting things that I might want to use in my code. So here I want write line, so I'll select that. It saves me the bother of writing it, press tab to uh, accept that suggestion. And now I'll put the text I want to display. Enter your name. Have to have a semicolon at the end. Check there are no red squigglies. Now it's suggesting again something that I want, might want to write there, which is an assignment to the first name variable. Don't rely too much on these suggestions. They won't always get it right. I'm going to do the longhand way. First name equals, now I'm going to write the console class name again, and this time I'll accept its suggestion of read line because that is exactly what I want to do. I want to read a line and press tab to accept it. Read a line of text entered by the user. Then I want to write something. Write line, I'm going to use the IntelliSense to save my typing effort. And here, tab to accept it. Then in the pair of uh, parentheses, I'm going to write a string, hello, comma, space, end the string with double quotation marks, plus, and then the name of that variable, first name. And there's my program. So don't worry too much about this green squiggly. That's warning me that in certain circumstances, errors might occur, but it's not as serious as the red squiggly. So for now, I'm just gonna ignore that and run my program by clicking this up here and the console pops up. It tells me enter my name. That's what I've en entered here. Enter your name. And I will do that now. Hugh, press enter. And then it displays hello, Hugh. And that's your first C Sharp program. Thanks for watching. To follow this tutorial in order, bookmark the playlist, which is shown under this video. If you like this lesson, give it a thumbs up. And to make sure you get notified whenever I upload new lessons, subscribe to my channel and click the little bell.